sorry. So thank you for the introduction. Can you see the screen and hear my voice? Yes. Okay, perfect. And I found that there are a lot of hinting in between. I hope that will not be too annoying. Okay, so I will just start. Uh, so, so I'm happy to share our recent publication here in this uh, symposium. My name is Wei-Ting Chen from Professor Barty Super's lab in Belgium. So actually my work is not really focusing on the oligogenous side, but in this presentation, you will hear how uh, we use spatial transomic and in situ sequencing to unbiasedly um, di discover a coordinated network among multiple cell types, including oligodendrocyte, their response to a certain microenvironment, the pathogenic hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. So we know that uh, Alzheimer's disease, which is a major type of the dementia. And in these images, this is the self-portrait of an artist, William, after a diagnosis as, uh, 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 with Alzheimer's disease. So clearly it's a disease will, which will cause um, gradually cognitive dysfunction and eventually death. So uh, the central hypothesis of the disease, uh, and there are a lot of strong genetic evidence showing that if it is, uh, uh, there might be a very strong um, uh, etiology of the disease. Um, However, there are several, several failure of the clinical trial. The anti-amyloid therapy, they can actually remove the amyloid plaque from the human brain, but they cannot really stop the disease progression. So they really make the whole field really hesitate. Should we still keep focusing on the EBITDA? So in our working hypothesis, we have slightly modified this hypothesis. We still consider EBITDA as a major trigger is important for the disease onset, but it's not eventually the driver of the disease, which means that EBITDA overexpression or misfolding and the accumulated deposit in the brain, and that might induce a abnormal cellular network around the plaque. And, and this uh, cellular network that might be uh, eventually independent of the presence of the plaque which means that in the end stage of the disease, if you remove the plaque, they are still sitting there. And some mechanism probably happening, um, already happening, happening and induced across multiple cell type, they are still there, keep driving the disease progression. So if that is the case, we are very interested to understand what is the um, cellular coordinated network induced by amyloid plaque. And uh, from multiple, lot of uh, literature research, it's clear that not only one cell type, but multiple cell type, they have very weird morphologies around the plaque, but not a cell far from the plaque. So uh, we consider it's possible. Uh, it's a network sharing by multiple cell type, and they further propagate this um, um, pathology stress, the signaling out of this kind of microenvironment. So then we want to understand what's the molecule, what's the cell type involved in this network. And to, to understand these kind of questions, um, initially we have uh, immunohistochemistry and we use the uh, ADMOS model, uh, which is a APB NIGF mapping model. So the coronal section of the mouse brain uh, from three to 18 months of age. So you can see the green, that is the GFAP, um, reactive astrocyte. So they form already kind of green envelope around the white, that is amyloid plaque, and the very initial stage of the disease. So among the disease progression, those cellular network is actually uh, spreading over. Um, it's probably depending on the presence of the plaque and also uh, propagating to the other brain regions. <clears throat> but then if we want to identify a uh, cellular coordinated network, it's impossible to use HC. We need a global molecular profile with spatial information. So we use spatial transomic. It's kind of a 2D RNA sequencing array. So in the old version of the spatial transomic, there are 1,007 spots 
on top of an array. So for each array, they have 200 million of the oligos. And uh, each oligo, they have poly detail and ID barcodes for, for each uh, uh, spot, the spatial localization. After we permeabilize the um, tissue, the mRNA will leak out from the cell and attach to the poly detail on the array. We do the in situ reverse transcription and we collect all the cDNA afterwards. And for the library construction, then after sequencing, we can trace back the spatial localization of each molecule based on the ID barcodes. So for each um, spot, the yellow spot shown here, they will provide us the global transforming profile of the corresponding uh, unique tissue domain. Then the spatial uh, resolution of each tissue domain, which is uh, 200, it's 100 micrometer in diameter of each spot. And the thickness of the tissue is 10 micrometer. So the spatial resolution is very compatible with our pathology amyloid plaque. That is actually uh, in between one to uh, in between 10 to uh, 100 micrometer in diameter. So this is our experimental design. The middle section we use for the array sequencing. And we also collect the very two adjacent section from the cryo uh, state uh, we use for the immunostaining. <clears throat> um, so then if we have the amyloid plaque in either two adjacent section, then we have very high confidence that the middle section, the corresponding spot, is collecting the transforming profile in the cells in the vicinity of amyloid plaque. Because we want to link the transforming profile to the abundance of the amyloid plaque, so we do the quantification of the A beta uh, based on the fluorescence of 6010. So, um, the quantification is based on the amount of the um, uh, abeta. So you can see that like this spot, they have a very intensive uh, fluorescence here that result in a much higher value after the quantification. And in this spot, they have diffuse plaque. Although they cover a huge area, but there is relative small of the abeta deposit in this spot. So eventually they give us a relative lower value after the quantification. Then based on this experimental design, we have for each spot, the full transformic profile of in average 7,000 of the genes <clears throat> and the average uh, corresponding level of the area deposition of each spot. Then uh, for this sandwich package, we carry it out on uh, two genotype and photon points. So eventually we have, um, more than 10,000 of the transformic profile across um, two genotype and four time points. So the Disney plot, they can separate based on the genotype, time points, and the brain regions. So we download the Allen Brain Atlas and do the image alignment so you will know which uh, region the spot coming from. So they can even separate the refined um, spatial localization of the spot in a somatic layer of the hippocampus so like very, three, uh, very small three uh, group here in the red. This is the somatic layer of the dentage virus. And this one is the CA3 and this is the one. So uh, we, after those uh, overview of the database, we have kind of confidence is biological meaningful. And we want to uh, understand whether this database can cluster the um, gene co-expression network uh, driven by certain biological factor. For example, if there's a landmark of the dentate jars, then they will only co-express and express, uh, especially from the spot from the dentate jars. Then it's also possible that some genes, they only um, showing and highly express in the presence of the amyloid plaque, then they they might uh, co-express and uh, their expression level might depending on the level of the plaque. So to do this kind of a gene co-expression network analysis, we use a very well-established algorithm, the WGCNA. 
which has been shown in multiple uh, publications to show they can identify gene co expressed together, normally they're functioning together. So more complex of your database is, then they will have higher chance you can find a refined network driven by a particular um, biological factor. So here we do it unbiasedly across our full database. So it's like uh, more than 10,000 of the profile. We don't put any assumption for analysis. It could be driven by the age, genotype, brain region, or the level of A beta, or brain regions, uh, or, or cell types. So to understand uh, what's the um, biological uh, driven of uh, the co-expression of each network, we want to understand the ex uh, differential expression of the network um, to the AD versus uh, wild type uh, mouse model. So we plot the differential gene expression of each network, uh, whether that is up or down regulated in AD versus wild type, or whether that is up or down regulated under the area stress. So the plot showing here, uh, that is the mean of the logbook change of the genes within each network. And the yellow spot is the result, the gene alteration from the three months. And the blue is the gene alteration and the 18 months. Then you can see that there is a outlier, <clears throat> the purple network, which is uh, upregulated at the 18 months under the genotype axis and a beta axis. And the, but this uh, network is kind of silent at the three months. So the yellow spot here is uh, not too much change. And the other interesting network is the red network, which is upregulated at the three months, but downregulated at 18 months in the a beta axis. So we particularly look into more uh, detail of those two networks. We also do a lot of clarification to estimate what's the cellular composition of each network and uh, which brain region they express. So eventually we name this purple network, which is composed by 57 of the genes, so it's plant induced genes network, the PIX network. And the red network is uh, really enriched with a lot of myelin related transcript. We call it oligodendrocyte network. So, here I'm going to show you the detail of each gene within each network. The red is the oligodendrocyte. So, they are um, upregulated in the plaque axis in the plaque um, at three months, but they are depleted at 18 months in these microenvironments. And the pigs is silent at three months and uh, most of the component of the pigs, they are uh, upregulated in AD, especially in the plaque niche. So um, then, then I'm going to show you detail about the pigs. It's composed by 57 of the gene, uh, uh, genes. So the plot showing here, uh, the green indicates the strength of the connectivity score of the gene pairs of the pigs. The darker the color indicates the higher co-expression of the gene pairs within the selected transomic profile. And the picture showing here is the transomic profile selected only from the wild type mice brain. And you can see it's not really co-expressed among all the gene pairs. They split into three clusters. The green cluster, they have very strong internal conductivity. And many of them, you can, they are kind of well known, they are expressed by astrocyte. And the blue and the orange, and the orange cluster, um, many of them are expressed by microglia. But this uh, fixed network, when we start to look into the transomic profile in the AD brain, <clears throat> so now I only select the AD transomic profile with lowest A beta uh, deposition. They already start to build on this kind of connectivity between the gene pairs and between the clusters. And if we 
gradually increase the amount of the EBITDA, you can see that the connectivity score is going to be more and more um, uh, stronger. So which indicate this network is gradually built up based on the amount of the EBITDA deposition in each tissue domain. And especially this orange network, this orange cluster, uh, they start to bring into the network, especially via the trim 2 and Tyro BP, with their projection, their uh, connectivity to the Apple E and the C1 Q ABC. And we are kind of surprised because this unbiased analysis, which actually point out the, uh, the one of the most important molecule in the Alzheimer's disease. And uh, based on the gene ontology analysis, it indicates that this network is uh, over activation of the classical complement cascade. For example, they have C1QABC and C4AB and this CLU. They also have a lot of downstream effector of the complement cascade. For example, lysosomal dysfunction, antigen processing and presentation, oxidative stress, immune response. So now we find a network which corresponding to the uh, plaque deposition, and we know the mechanism, uh, uh, we know the molecule, and we also know what's the potential uh, functioning mechanism of this network. But we don't know what's the cell which represent and express and driving this network. So we overlap our um, network together with previously identified uh, marker gene of the disease is social exercise and microglia. So it's clearly not only from one cell type, we also have some uh, genes, which is not identified as those kind of uh, um, cell markers. So to get a real um, experiment mm -hmm. and uh, a single cell resolution, we incorporate the other orthogonal technology, the in-situ sequencing with the collaboration with Katana. <laughs> The technology enables us to get a, a gene expression profile uh, for more than uh, 100 targets together on one section in microscope resolution. So then the picture showing here is the puncta of the PROX1, which is the landmark of the dentagirus. And I'm going to show you the expression of the SOTA markers. The red puncta is from the neuron D6 or synodal physing. And the blue is from oligodendrocyte markers, and the green from exocyte markers, and the yellow from microglia markers from those genes. And you can already see a cluster of green and the yellow. And that's actually the place of amyloid plaque. So we can do the immunostaining after the in situ sequencing on top of the same section. So then we can try to use this technology to understand what the cell express or pigs in the mouse brain. We do this experiment in two wild type and two AD brains at 80 months of age. So first of all, uh, we try to see whether the pigs, they are enriched and the plaque. And to our surprise, uh, the two orthogonal uh, technologies, they give us very highly uh, consistent results. So the y-axis is the local change of the genes to the A-beta level based on a spatial transomic. And the x-axis is the log odds ratio, the enrichment of the genes in the red one and the, uh, and the plaque uh, based on the in-situ sequencing analysis. So both of them, they all show that the pigs is um, up significantly upregulated around the plaque. And we will try to uh, do the cell typing of each genes within our pigs. For example, uh, we start from looking at the, the green subcluster of the pigs. There are many bubbles showing here. The bigger the bubble indicate the higher log odds ratio of the enrichment of that genes correlate with the cell type marker uh, of certain cell type. So then you can see most of them are expressed uh, majorly by the astrocyte. 
But the interesting stuff, you can see the APOE normally expressed by um, astrocyte in a wild type in 80 moles. But they start to express by microglia around the armillary plaque. And it's also interesting for C4A and B. So it's normally expressed by astrocyte, but they start to express by oligodendrocyte in the 80 moles, especially around the armillary plaque. So this indicate that this microenvironment that trigger the activation of microglia or oligodendrocyte to start to express APOE and the C4Q and B involving this network. We also do the same for the uh, blue and orange cluster. And it seems that uh, the majority of them are expressed by microglia, but neural uh, astrocyte oligodendrocyte are sometimes also involved. We also do the similar practice in the human brain. So not only the PICs, we also do the in-situ sequencing for the oligo network. And the uh, um, superior frontal gyrus of uh, post-mortem human brain tissue. So together we do the uh, 220 targets, on 3AD and 3 control. And the image showing here is the white uh, amyloid plaque is co-localized with the red, the neurons. Uh, they are mostly uh, in the gray meters. And the blue is oligodendrocyte, mostly in the white meters. And the purple image is showing here uh, is the expression of our peaks is co-localized with, it's more enriched with the plaque and the gray meters. And for the oligodendrocyte, um, during the cell typing, it's really purely from the, uh, the oligo network is really purely from the oligodendrocyte. So that's why we name it as an olig network. So I uh, make a short summary of the PIX network. So we consider it's a gradually built up network between especially microglia and astrocyte and a vicinity of amyloid plaque. So this is the mean Z score of the gene expression level of the pigs at the three months of age in different conditions, for example, in wild time mice or 80 months brain, depending on different level of the EBITDA. It's kind of silent at the three months, but the pigs, they start to uh, increase the expression based on the level of the EBITDA deposition in the 80 brains. However, this response, they don't really have any unique regional um, specificity. So the more red, that is more upregulated and the plaque niche and the blue is depletion in the plaque. And with the mesh that indicates uh, it's not significant of up or down regulation. So at the three months is kind of silent, but 18 months, as long as they show the significance that's uh, highly uh, overexpressed around the plaque, but kind of all over the brain. And for the oligodendrocyte network, um, it's kind of interesting. Their expression level at the three months is during the uh, mild EBITDA deposition, their expression level is gradually go up. But if there are humongous EBITDA deposition, such as plaque in the brain, in the brain. So even at the three months, this network they disrupt, they reduce the uh, expression level. And for the eighteen months, mm -hmm. the oligodendrocyte network um, in the mild EBA deposition, they already go up compared to the wild type, but they gradually uh, decrease uh, when we increase the EBA um, per um, microenvironment. So we consider the OLIC network as an early reaction to the mild EBITDA deposition, but they eventually break down if there are severe EBITDA deposition in the brain. And this reaction actually have the regional diversity. For example, if you look at the three months of age, so this network is highly uh, enriched in the plaque, especially in the fiber tract thalamus and hypothalamus where are the brain region enriched with the myelin and oligodendrocyte. Um, and for the 18 months of age, um, that is not very clear about the depletions in certain brain regions. So it's a more like a, 
uh, early reaction in the oligodendrocyte enriched area that have higher response to the plaque. And so to, I would like to especially appreciate uh, several uh, collaborators. It's a humongous work across multiple uh, uh, colleges, especially um, Ashley and Mark. They are bioinformaticians and uh, they carry out majority of the analysis of this uh, paper. And uh, many people from Party Super's lab and people from Image Core in VIBK Leuven. So the spatial transtomic, which we have the collaboration with the uh, Yuking Lumber from um, Kaliska. And now the spatial transtomic has been bought by Tense Genomics. It's available, uh, it's called like a text Visium slides. And uh, uh, work together with Katana is now also being bought by Tense Genomics as well. So they are also available um, from, from that company. And uh, mice is from Rican, and the human brain sample is from the Iran Brain Bank. Yeah, it's now open for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for the beautiful talk. Uh, while we are waiting for the questions to pour in, I personally have a question because our lab is interested in like multiple sclerosis and then like a, like a normal appearing white matter that it's how far from, like we're always curious like how far from the lesion that is con considered normal. So I guess like in your system, you have the chance to really see if like uh, how far away from the plaque like the oligo modules, like a genes response, early responses, like a back to like a homeostatic states. Like, a, yeah, like I said, my question is like, have you looked into um, that? Uh, you mean that, uh, did I look into the homeostasis of, sorry, yeah, the, uh, like uh, from the plaque, the center of the plaque, I assume that uh, surrounding the oligo will respond to, to the plaque and then by operate, upregulation of like the myelin, myelin genes. And then I wonder like how far, like uh, maybe like five micron or a hundred micron from the plaque and then you no longer see this upregulation. I wonder have you checked that? Uh, yes, so... From the spatial transtomic, we do the analysis in a different way, but from the in-situ sequencing, it's possible to understand the distance from the plaque. So here you can see that we drew the rings based on the distance from the plaque. The white is the 60 10 standing. So we expand the mask of this kind of uh, uh, amyloid plaque by 10 micrometer in, in, in radius as the ring one. And then we expand by 20 micrometer as a radius for ring two, ring three, two, four, five, yeah. So then on the dendro side, um, we see the enrichment of the C4A and C4B in on the dendro side, especially in ring one. And that gradually um, decrease from the ring one to ring five. So, um, so actually, after ring two is already almost going to the background levels. So the enrichment of the C4B in oligodendrocyte is like this, but for the enrichment in the astrocyte is more like in ring two or ring three. And the reaction of the microglia is more like within the ring one. Um, yes, that's the result from the in situ sequencing. But for the spatial transtomic, unfortunately, we do the quantification in the other way around. So we don't have like those rings because those spots are physically fixed by their spatial localization. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Nathan Pomper. Great talk and work based on your staining for PLP1 and MBP. It suggests that your work focused on myelinating oligodendrocytes. Did you see any interesting phenotypes with regard to OPCs or newly born oligodendrocytes? In many other disease models, OPCs demonstrate increased proliferation whereas new oligodendrocytes um, degenerate. It's a really nice question. So uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, during our experimental design, we did not really focus on different lineage of oligodendrocytes. 
Um, so eventually we don't have a reliable marker to indicate whether the OPC is involved in the PIX or the OLEX network. So we, I cannot provide any um, answer with confidence, but we just aware this kind of uh, important question after we generate all the data. And there are several interesting papers recently. They also find the OPC, they start to go into senescence uh, and the plaque niche. And uh, they start to go like a, a differentiate into the myelinated oligodendrocyte. And they uh, instead they release uh, inflammatory cytokines. <laughs> And they become to involving this kind of inflammatory network together with the microglia around amyloid plaque. But it's kind of pity here that our project can now answer the question about OPC. Yeah. Okay, we'll quickly uh, next question uh, from Brian. Uh, amazing data in the presentation. What is the expression of the complement molecules in oligodendrocytes at later stage in your AD model, like your second point of analysis? 18 months. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the question is uh, the we did just <laughs> Could you repeat again? Sorry. Uh, what is the expression of the complement molecules in the oligodendrocytes at a later stage? When? Um, when? I guess is about the species. But it, what is the expression of the complement molecules? What's the expression? Mm -hmm. the so the complement, uh, so the peaks, the expression level, um, they are silent at three months and also six months, but then they are dramatically increased between six and 12 months. And after 12 months, those uh, peaks and complement molecules, they are kind of uh, saturated after 12 months. And for their expression and the oligodendrocyte, um, the species, sorry. So you, so the question is about whether they also express, how they express in the human oligodendrocyte? Um, oh, I, uh, I got a clarification that's, um, uh, I meant the expression level that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, it can like a further maybe reach out to our uh, waiting to further uh, address the question. Uh, for now, like uh, we thank waiting for a very <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs>